Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today I'm cooking with Tammy. I'm going to show you how to make the ultimate beef stew recipe. So gather all those ingredients and let's get to cooking. For this recipe, we're going to need potatoes. I'm going to be using yellow potatoes. However, feel free to swap it on out with white or russet potatoes. I'm also going to be using baby carrots. Same thing. Switch it on up if you have the regular sized carrots. Slice those bad boys on up and you'll be good to go. Along with finely chopped garlic, diced tomatoes, sliced mushrooms. Of course, if you're not a mushroom fan or lover, get rid of the mushrooms. Along with sliced onions, fresh thyme, bay leaves, tomato paste, all-purpose flour, Worcestershire sauce. We also have our chicken bouillon along with beef broth. And in this particular cup, just in case you're wondering, it's half sherry and half white wine, which is going to pair perfectly as well. However, this is just a personal preference for me, but if you have red wine on hand, use the red wine. Salt, ground black pepper, oil, and for the star of the show, we have about five pounds of chuck roast right here. And with all of that being said, let's get to cooking. First thing we want to work on is our meat, all right? We're just going to cut it on up into nice bite-sized pieces, or should I say cubes. We're going to cube it on up. And it's really important when we cut our meat on up to make sure it's similar in size. I'm not saying that it has to be perfect, but guess what? You want the meat to be able to cook on down at the same time. Because let's just hypothetically say you have a piece of meat that's one centimeter thick versus a piece of meat that's one inch thick. What's going to happen is you're going to knock somebody's dentures out because it's not going to cook on down at the same time. The meat is going to, it's not going to be tender or you're going to have some that's tender and some that's like obviously really tough. All right. So make sure you cut it in the same size or at least close to the same size. Just getting it cut it on up. And like I said before, this is about five pounds of meat simply because I am making a big old pot worth of stew beef. <laughs> First thing you want to do is add some salt to your beef, all right? We got to season it on up just a bit. So we're going to hit it off with a good amount of salt. Keep in mind that these pieces are pretty chunky. So you want to get in there and get it really, really good. Boom. Once you're done, you're going to hit it off with some freshly cracked ground black pepper, just like this. And guess what? We're done. Not ready to eat, literally, but we're done as far as seasoning up our beef. Simply because, as I mentioned earlier, we have all of these ingredients that's going to contribute so many different flavors. We don't need anything else. So we're going to grab our pot. For this particular recipe, I'm going to be using my Dutch oven, which is going to work perfectly fine. However, if you have, let's say, a regular pot, get your pot and let's go. For this recipe, we're going to be using our large size Dutch oven. However, if you're going to be rocking out with maybe, let's say, two pounds of meat, half of what I'm using, of course, pull out the small or the medium Dutch oven and you'll be good to go. All right, first thing we want to do first and foremost is make sure we find the oil with a high smoke point. That could be safflower oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, even avocado oil. If not, your meat is going to like literally smoke and set off the smoke alarm. We're just going to add the meat to the pot, brown it on up on all sides. That's all we're going to do. Let's get this meat situated in this pot. Right now my flame is on high heat. After about 10 minutes, our meat is finally brown on up. Now, the reason why it took so long is because I rinsed the steak, or should I say I rinsed the beef off prior to cooking it. And what happened was it had some residual water retained within the beef. So by the time I added it to the pot, it was not as hot as I wanted it to be, all right? That's another reason as to why I'm explaining because if it happens to you, no worries, don't get nervous. Once you have oil in the pan or the pot, what's gonna happen is all of that water is gonna drain out of the meat. Just allow it enough time to evaporate. And once that happens, your meat eventually is gonna fry on up. 
with the oil that you added to the pot, if that makes sense. So that's what took a little bit longer than anticipated. But nevertheless, our meat is perfectly brown and fried on up, as you can see. All right, now to the same pot that we have before us, we're not gonna rinse that one out. We're gonna leave it just the way it is. We're gonna add our diced tomatoes along with our tomato paste. And we're gonna mix it on up. And we're gonna cook down our tomatoes and our tomato paste. You're gonna cook it for about five to seven minutes. We're looking for our tomatoes to take on a nice deep red color, even darker than what it is already. This part right here should take about five to seven minutes. I'll show you exactly what to look for once we come back. It's starting to break down already because this is a Dutch oven, of course, AKA cast iron. And if there's one thing that we all agree on when it comes to cast iron is it holds that heat and locks it in. I mean, for hours to come, you go back in the kitchen and you touch that pot and it's still hot. You're like, but wait a minute, I turned my stove top off like two hours ago, what's good? <laughs> but that's just what it is. Check it on out after about five minutes. This looks absolutely beautiful. Check it on out, it looks gorgeous. After about five minutes, we're gonna introduce our onions, along with our garlic, mushrooms, and carrots. That's almost like literally almost all of our ingredients. I'm gonna add a small pinch of salt, season up these veggies a little bit, a little bit of freshly cracked ground black pepper. And that's it, we're gonna stir it on up one more time. I'm gonna allow these veggies to saute for about five minutes until the onions are nice and translucent. Mm, it smells so delicious. And I can guarantee you it's gonna be so hearty. It's gonna be everything. And the cool thing about this recipe is, of course, once again, it's using basic ingredients. It's just about pairing the ingredients together in order to make or create the perfect recipe. I'm going to take this time out to add the all-purpose flour. And the reason why we're adding the all-purpose flour is because we want to create a base for our stew beef, all right? We want it to have a nice, rich thickness going on. So the flour is definitely going to help to thicken up that gravy. Mm and give it, I can't even talk because I'm salivating just thinking about it, to be honest. It's gonna give us that nice, rich, thick, textured gravy that when you like literally, oh my God, bite into your steak, you're gonna be like, you know when you make that sound, you know it's delicious. Mm -mm -mm. It's gonna be everything. <laughs> After about a minute, we're gonna add a Worcestershire sauce. Add it on in there. We're also gonna add our bouillon, or should I say beef broth. Another thing, if you don't have beef broth on hand, but you do have the bouillon powder, dissolve that bad boy in some water and make beef broth, please. Not only is it gonna be more flavorful anyway, but you don't have to run out and literally buy stock or broth if you have the actual powder. Just combine it with some water, which is what I usually do. And the cool thing about it is, I get to adjust the flavors to my preference. I'm gonna add the wine at this point. We're gonna add our bouillon powder. If you don't wanna use chicken powder, you can actually use beef bouillon as well. Mix it on up really, really good. Make sure everything is well combined. Mm-hmm, this looks great. We're gonna add our meat back to the pot. Be careful, you don't want it to splash. that stir it on up really really good and we're gonna add our fresh thyme and bay leaves give it one quick stir cover it on down when it comes to cooking the stew beef I'm gonna give you two ways you can continue to cook it on your stove top until the meat becomes nice and softened add liquid as necessary or you can cook it in your oven 
Me personally, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place it into the oven, preheat it for 350 degrees to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, pop it in the oven, allow it to do what it do, cook it on down, check on it periodically if I need to add extra liquid. That's what I'm going to do. But let's not forget, if you're also going to be adding potatoes, stick around because you're going to need to know when to add those potatoes. After about two hours, let's check on our stew. I want the meat to be a little bit more tender than what it currently is. Not to mention, let's not forget about our potatoes. So I'm going to add our potatoes. And the potatoes are going to take about 20 minutes to cook. Within that time frame, the beef should be softened up even more. If you're going to add potatoes to your stew, definitely add it 20 minutes before the beef is done. Get the meat to be as soft as you want it to be and 20 minutes before you turn that stove off add the potatoes i'm going to cover it one down add it back to my 350 degree fahrenheit oven and allow the potatoes to soften and the meat to tenderize even more let's check on our beef stew wow check it on out as you can see, the gravy is nice and thick and beautiful. The meat is tender, our potatoes are tender. And guess what, we're done. We're gonna serve this up with some white rice and we're definitely gonna go to town and enjoy this delicious beef stew. Definitely give this recipe a try. Let me know what you think about this recipe. I can guarantee you, you're gonna fall in love with it because it's that delicious. All right, as always, I'm your girl, Cook with Tammy, and I will definitely catch you in another video. Talk to you later, bye guys.